Hey, I'm Melissa and I'm a partner manager at YouTube. So I get to work with YouTube creators every day to help them with their channels to talk through different ways to grow their audience. The goal of Channel Checkup is to show you how you can analyze your own channel by taking you step by step through a typical meeting with a partner manager. Today, I'm here with YouTube creator Laura Kampf. We're going to be diving into Laura's channel to find out what's going well, what can be improved, and answer some of her questions. First, can you tell us a little bit more about your channel and how it's going? Sure. So my name is Laura Kampf. I'm a creator from Cologne, Germany, and I make videos about building things. I build very different things. Sometimes it's bicycles, sometimes it's furniture. And I try to upload every week. Actually, that's one of the very first things that I noticed on your channel and that you do really well. I think what's so important about a consistent upload schedule is that people can come to anticipate when you're going to post yes. and therefore watch the video when mm -hmm. you upload it. I agree. I think it's uh, just as much um, a ritual for me as it should be for the viewer or I want it to be for the viewer. Absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head here. You tap into people's lives, right? You become part of their routines, mm -hmm. kind of like anticipating a new episode from exactly. your favorite TV show. Exactly, yeah. One of the most important parts to having your YouTube channel is making sure your channel page is well branded. Mm -hmm. And that's simply because this is the page where people go to discover more of your content and also understand your brand. Who are you and what kind of videos do you make? Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about how you decided to create your banner, for example. Do you think that accurately describes who you are? No, honestly not. <laughs> I, think, I think my banner is super outdated and I should definitely work on this. I think it is a nice image and there is some dynamics to it, but it's not communicating who I am at all. I think it's the wrong strategy, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think so, it's a, a fine line between artsy, but also telling and exactly. conveying what your actual message is. Some best practices for having a channel banner are making sure you have an upload schedule, including a photo of yourself, or maybe even having some sort of guiding text that talks about the type of content you cover, or maybe even the items that you're building. Exactly. I think the banner should probably have uh, my face and should be a lot cleaner and then maybe uh, new videos every Sunday instead of new videos every week. I will change that when I get home. <laughs> All right. I think one thing too to keep in mind is that anytime you're making channel art to make sure you look at it on a mobile phone and if that image is legible and clear on a smaller device, likely it obviously will be on a desktop too. Okay, cool. Now, when we think about viewers finding your content and deciding whether or not they want to watch, thumbnails are the most important strategy you can employ. That's one of my favorite things about your channel. You have your logo on every single one of your thumbnails, which ideally makes it easy for someone to identify that it belongs to your channel. But when I started my channel, I wanted to make a name for myself and I wanted people to recognize my videos from other videos. You work so hard on making these really beautifully edited videos that you want to make sure people don't gloss over it simply because yeah. you skimmed out on the thumbnail. Yeah. yeah. They're definitely really important. Yeah. It's kind of the business card of my video, right? Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorite parts about your channel is that you have plenty of playlists. You cover all the different types of content you offer, vlogs, building things, different events that you attend. One thing that you can do is actually create a section for each one of the playlists that you have. Like we see here for uploads mm -hmm. and also here for popular uploads. Mm -hmm. What you can do is create a section for every single playlist you have to better showcase the diversity of content that you make and also make it easily accessible for somebody to click and watch more. Yeah, that makes sense. Tell me a little bit more about how you approach titling and adding descriptions to your video. For me, the challenge is always to find a title that's not only appealing to a broad audience, but also appealing to people who, who build themselves. Mm. And, and there's a difference. So that's always the trick for me to find a balance between these, these two worlds. I think one thing I might start thinking about as well, when you're creating a title for a video, what's something that you would type in in order to find a particular video on makers or builders? Yeah. Another good exercise to practice is if there are certain words or certain phrases that don't quite make it in the title, mm -hmm. you can put that in the first two or three sentences of the description. Okay. That's another great way to make sure you're capitalizing on those searchable terms. Yeah. 
So a really great way to help navigate the viewer's journey is by employing a feature called end screens. Mm -hmm. It's usually something that's reserved towards the end of the video. Mm -hmm. You can create a clickable asset that says subscribe, you can create one that says watch another video, mm -hmm. or you can even link to playlists. Mm -hmm. How do you like to use end screens? I try to link to playlists if that's applicable, and I also try to offer a um, subscription. So these are the two things I always do. I think playlist is always better because there's a bigger chance that people, you know, get hooked on my content and watch the next video and the next video, and, and that's what I want. Also, if I'm doing a video on a, on a series, of course, I'm going to link to the other videos of this yeah. series. So given that a lot of your older videos still get a lot of views, one great tip you can use is putting end screens on those videos as well. Yeah. That ensures any time somebody lands on any one of your videos, they can go and find another one really easily. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's something, for some reason, I never consider changing old videos. Absolutely. But I will, I will do that. <laughs> Another thing to keep in mind is there are really cool features in analytics that a lot of people don't know about. One of the number one things that I look at is obviously your overview report. This is usually the first thing that you're brought to. I personally like to look at the last 90 days mm -hmm. because I think this is a good amount of time and a good amount of data to yeah. look at. Yeah. Watch time is one of the single most important metrics to YouTube mm -hmm. because it indicates whether or not somebody's even engaged with your content. So what do you think these spikes mean? That's hopefully when I uploaded the video. <laughs> right, right. No, you're absolutely right. That, that would be ideal, right? Mm -hmm. That every time you post, somebody watches the video. Yeah. And so one easy way that you can check this is actually by comparing it with your videos published. Oh, I've never seen that. <laughs> yeah. But generally, if we see that there are spikes aligned here, then we know that people are, are generally leaned in. One thing that you can do is actually select the multi-line chart. So if we were to click on that, we're now able to identify the specific videos yeah. that caused these particular spikes. Mm -hmm. So we know that this spike came all from the super fast drill powered boat mortar, <laughs> which is one of your most recent videos yes. and is performing extremely well. Mm -hmm. This also kind of begs the question, how can we look specifically at that video's analytics? Mm -hmm. And that would lead me to audience retention. How long are people actually watching? Oh yeah, that's interesting. We can actually click on that video and see the retention report for that video. I would say there are three major things. One is when the line dips. Mm -hmm. This would indicate that whatever's happening at a given moment isn't compelling for mm -hmm. the, the viewer. Mm -hmm. So they're actually leaving the video. I would say the second thing too is that a majority of the video is a relatively flat line. This would indicate that people are compelled by the content they're seeing mm -hmm. and they're staying to watch. Mm -hmm. In the very end, we see a bump right yeah. here. Yeah. That would indicate to me that the content is so compelling, people are actually deciding to watch it over and over again. My problem with analytics is it's not really good for me to focus on numbers so much. Then I start to question my decisions and I get super insecure. But I still notice that there's a lot of information in there that might be helpful for my content. You are definitely not alone in this. Uh, there are a lot of folks out there who are just completely overwhelmed by the amount of information that we have here. Mm -hmm. That's actually why we created YouTube Studio. It's a really user-friendly, easy way mm -hmm. to get tidbits of information without going down this rabbit hole. Oh, okay, so it tells me right away if the video is performing well or not so well. That's great. This is exactly what I need. I just need a little bit of reassurance and uh, the numbers that tell me it's all fine. You're doing well. <laughs> you, can, you can go create now. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, I hope this was helpful. Were there any main takeaways? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are tons of things. So the first thing is I'm going to change the channel banner, make it a bit more cleaner, maybe make it say every Sunday and not every week to build a little bit more routine. Um, also going back to older videos, uh, checking the end screens. I think that's a, also a very good tip. Then I will update the sections and uh, implement my playlists. And also, <laughs> you helped me with my fear of the analytics. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Now that Laura was able to figure out some concrete action items for her channel, we want to hear from all of you. Let us know in the comments what you learned and want to implement on your own channel. And if you're interested in how channels get partner managers, check out this resource. Be sure to subscribe and check out more awesome videos on the YouTube Creators channel. Bye.